Hello, everyone. Uh, good to see you all. Um, I, we're here. So I'm Alex Margolin. Uh, very nice to meet you. Um, I'm a partner at Pamira, which is a private equity and growth capital firm. Um, and we're here to talk today about the French-German couple, uh, like in the good old times with Helmut Kohl and François Mitterrand. Uh, hopefully they're looking at us and being proud of us here today. Um, I have the pleasure to have with me uh, Itziar uh, from uh, Iris Capital, um, which is a VC firm present both in France and in Germany, uh, and who has uh, a past in uh, consulting and actually started as a production engineer at PM BMW. Um, we have as well uh, with us Vincent Huguet, who is the co-founder and CEO of Malt, uh, which is a uh, uh, marketplace for uh, uh, freelance consultants uh, leading in Europe. Uh, and finally, guest star joining us now, Olivier de Panafieu, uh, managing partner of Roland Berger in France, uh, which is a leading management consulting firm and very active uh, in Scale Up Europe uh, recently, which I'm sure you, you followed. Uh, so very pleased to, to see you all today. Um, I think we have a number of topics that we can address. Uh, the first one, uh, I'll, I'll quickly go through the four big questions that we would like to, to discuss. The first one is, when we talk about France and Germany, there is this big question around the cultural fit. Uh, and, you know, are we good at working together? Do we have similarities? Uh, and, and, uh, and likewise, also, what are our different dif differences, constructive differences? So I'd like to, to, to hear about, uh, about that. We should talk also about what our politicians can do about helping this alliance, this couple, especially in the context of Brexit. Um, and again, scale up Europe, our experience here will be, will be very helpful. Uh, and finally, given that many of you are probably entrepreneurs or investors, what lessons you guys may have for this audience uh, and even if I'm today the moderator, I'll, you know, I can't help myself but give my own opinion at some point, so excuse me for this uh, in advance. Um, so we'll start with the cultural fit. Um, I'll start with Vincent. Um, you are a CEO, French. You've now moved to Munich uh, to actually set, push your business into the, the German market. Can you tell us about what you've observed there? And Itia, of course, given that you're fluent in French, uh, also is, is Spanish and based in Germany, I'm sure you'll have uh, good viewpoints on this topic. Yes, um, so, so I started Malta here in, in Paris, so the HQs in Paris, and as you said, I decided to move to Munich two years ago. Uh, that was an important move for me and I think for the company to really understand the market being there with them. We, we knew it was going to be a diff difficult market, and, and, and I wanted to, to understand it from, from the ground. And I mean, I will spare you the, the, the most uh, evident thing like uh, punctuality and all these things. I guess there are tons of books about that. Um, but I would say that compared maybe to, to the UK, we have a lot of startups tend to go first, uh, probably because we all speak English. Um, people think that they understand because they will know the language, understand the culture, so they, they go to the UK thinking they're going to understand. I think a good thing about Germany is that most of us, even those who speak German, uh, don't know that much uh, Germany. So I think we, ha we have to go there with some kind of humility. And what I've learned about Germany, what I've realized is, um, you know, for instance, uh, here in Paris, uh, here in France, uh, we are a very, very centralized country. For instance, uh, this event every year, France Digital Day, if you're in the tech industry, you meet all entrepreneurs, investors, journalists, etc. So there's a kind of intuitive personal connection that is very strong. Um, and Germany is very, very different from that because it's obviously a decentralized country. From here, you, again, most of us don't know that much Germany, but uh, we have this idea of uh, Berlin as the capital being like Paris as the economic power. And Berlin, until recently, had no, uh, and I think now they have two companies in the DAX 30. Uh, Paris has 39 of the CAC 40. So that's a very different thing. And this, I'm a big believer that, you know, culture impacts 
um, uh, geography impacts culture um, and, and the contrary. And that impacts how you relate internally, how you work with your coworkers, about the hierarchy is very different, uh, but that has an impact also in how you work with your customers, how you build trust. Again, you cannot just have lunch and build that on into two personae. You have to be much more fact-based, you have to build this trust. So I think that's the biggest challenge for, for us, for Latin people, let's say, when we go to Germany. Maybe building on that, um, it's true that many people don't have a preconceived opinion on uh, the Franco-German side. However, sometimes I have the impression that um, there's a lot of hesitation from uh, the company side to, to cross the Rhine. If I compare to coming from Spain to the differences between Spain and Germany, for instance, there, there's a lot of mutual appreciation from the beginning. So the idea is that we are very complementary. Germans get things done, Spanish people... They are quite serious at work, but yet they know what life is all about. Um, but when I look at German-French um, um, cultural differences, I think there's a lot more hesitation, and uh, it's perceived as being significantly more different. Um, and at the end of the day, this per perception counts a lot. If um, I look back at my own experience, so in, in my case, I've spent a lot of time in, in, in both countries. I went to school to France from the age of three years to 18, and I've been now living in Germany for 20 years. Um, and I think, obviously, finding maybe profiles that can um, have this, uh, this affinity for both cultures um, makes, makes a big difference. Um, and, uh, and so being, uh, being able to bridge uh, this gap in a way and also finding the people that feel that they have, a, in a way, a personal mission um, and feel privileged to be able to accomplish this task because they have uh, been exposed to both cultures, I think this is very helpful to start with. I, I mean, so just uh, pursuing on, on this topic of talent, which, I mean, clearly there is a big talent war in our, in our, uh, in our market at the moment. Uh, we see this both in France, in the rest of Europe, in the, in the world. It must be even more difficult for a French startup or scale-up as they arrive in Germany to be between the German, the German local players and the big global players. How can you differentiate to attract talent uh, and, and, and find the right plat platform to, um, to attract them? Yeah, I think that's the big topic. Uh, that's the most difficult thing. That's a market where there is no unemployment, but no at all levels of society. So when you uh, go to people in the digital market, in, in tech, in sales, etc., it's even worse. Like uh, we realized, like uh, our internal HR team or our headhunters. I mean, here in France, you contact some people and they politely say no, they politely say, okay, let me have a call and I'll see, and I'll check what, if it's interesting for me. There it's, again, this very direct, in a way you, you, you win some time, uh, approach of saying, okay, what is the salary? Uh, why is your company great? And you have to pitch. So I've been, you know, in many occasions, uh, recruiting salespeople in Munich, spending one hour the first interview was not uh, me interviewing was the, the candidate interviewing me. So that's a very difficult market, that's for sure. And for, that's why, uh, again, that's one of the reasons when I went there, because I think that German people, I mean, no one wants to work for a satellite office. So if you are, um, I don't know, working in Salesforce or uh, in uh, Google in, in, in Paris, that's a bit different, you know? It's such a big company, it's a bit different. But realize that if you are launching in Germany and you're a French company, nobody knows you. So you have, as you said, this, this, you are between these local players who are, you know, they have their own network from the investors, etc. And you have on the other side the big American players. And the big American players, they, 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 I mean, DAG is the biggest market of continental Europe. Uh, let's say Slack is launching, they go to Munich, they hire 10 sales. They don't really care about the price of it, you know? So, the, so they pay, maybe if you pay 100, they pay 200. So yes, you have to find something in employer branding. And one of the things I thought was important for me is showing uh, the, the people, the candidate there, that it's the most important market for us in, in Europe. And that, wa that was why I, I decided to go there. Do you, do you think actually, just before we go into the political uh, question, do you think that some of your shareholders, your backers, your investors, can they help 
uh, in this inter in internationalization and setting up, especially in Germany. Uh, have you, uh, as well, ITCR, helped French businesses to set up in, in Germany? Well, I'll be honest, my, my investors, they know everyone here, uh, but they have some connection. There are some, 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 particular, uh, some, some particular cases, and high risk capital is one, but usually they are very uh, French centric. So they are more and more European and more at growth stage fund. Now we have uh, Eurasio, we have Goldman Sachs, so yes, they have more presence. But uh, in a way, you're, you're a lot on your own. What's for sure is that, again, in this candidate driven market, when you have raised money, when you have like, funds that are international behind you, that creates trust. So everything in Germany is about trust with clients, with candidates, with uh, journalists. Everyone needs to, to understand that. Yeah, it's a good point. Having uh, an international investor is also a very strong statement and, and commitment already. Uh, but yes, there are many uh, examples of companies where we've helped out with going international and, and, and the flavor of it varies from, from case to case. But some things is things like identifying a small team from a small competitor player that uh, maybe got acquired and where we know the people, we know they will be available and we make this connection, um, or identifying a, a small first uh, unit in this place. Sometimes it's more about helping out, figure out which is the right location to start with, um, or also when to open a local office. Yeah, yeah we, I, look, we, we, we've seen this as, as Pamira, and as we've been backing uh, you know, a number of big scale-ups today, like Klarna, or like Flixbus, or uh, now Miracle, uh, or others, Next Think. I mean, as they set up in new countries, we've been uh, hopefully helpful uh, to them in, 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 uh, in, in, in expanding. Olivier, politicians, what can they do about it? How can they help us? <laughs> Thanks, Alexandre. That's a very good question, I think. No, the, 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 the good thing is they can do something about it. They can do something about it because they're first fully aware of the situation. Secondly, they know what is at stake. And uh, thirdly, they have um, levers to activate. Uh, so first, they, they, they know the, uh, the situation, despite the, the brilliance of our companies, the people in this room and in this uh, event in general, uh, despite the 70 plus unicorns we have in, front, the, in Europe, the 2 million plus uh, employments that which have been created, we do not have the complete populated, I would say, landscape of unicorns, multicorns, ultimate industrial buyers, powerful IPOs, the full landscape of VC from down to top and especially the top part. And so uh, this uh, complete populated uh, ecosystem doesn't pre-exist completely. And so we need to do something about it in order to nurture it, to help it bloom. So they know that. Secondly, they know what is at stake. Uh, first, I think I was very amused to, to hear you about the Franco-German thing, because th there is something at stake, which is that we are very fragmented, obviously. And so uh, obviously, uh, most of the, uh, the scale-ups go directly to the US before becoming uh, European, because it sounds more frightening to cross the Rhine than to cross the Atlantic Ocean, in a way, doesn't it? Huh? Um, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite a paradox. So we are lacking the uh, commercial, but also HR, European uh, market. Secondly, even though we have a lot of funds, uh, we're still lacking the very large, a lot of very, very large financing, plus the very powerful IPO market. Lacking a little bit as well of deep tech, uh, deep tech scale-up, and finally collaboration between uh, scale-ups and, um, and large groups. Um, so those are the topics uh, which uh, the Scale Up Europe initiative tried to attack uh, in last uh, April and May, uh, initiative launched by uh, President Macron, but then enlarged uh, in a European scale immediately, uh, which we had the, the honor to, uh, to animate. And um, uh, what I think is interesting is that uh, very concrete recommendations came out of this group. It's a group of 200 entrepreneurs, companies, also VCs. Uh, so the ecosystem itself, really, not politicians, but the ecosystems, suggesting uh, ideas for, for politics or for the ecosystem itself. So for example, for the HR, um, you know, there is the idea of this uh, European uh, tech visa, uh, which we propose to enlarge to a real uh, European uh, tech worker status, which will allow and, 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 and really help international careers uh, allowing notably the portability of, of social rights and, uh, and, uh, and in the end having uh, cities obviously like Paris but other ones that will be hubs like London is a hub today completely international. Uh, same kind of idea is to, is to foster uh, 
uh, unification of the, um, of the stock option systems. Uh, actually, in France, we are more or less the, the world champion of taxes, aren't we? But with BSPC, we are rather good. Huh? So the idea is to enlarge that. And the Franco-German uh, couple, which can show some uh, leadership, can show leadership there. And also to, uh, to develop um, a tech Erasmus program. Uh, amusingly enough, we made a pilot on this program with 10 companies out of the uh, French Tech 120 at Roland Berger. We proposed uh, working contracts with three places, one in a, in a, 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 a scale-up of the French Tech, and two at Roland Berger, one in Paris, and one everywhere in the world. Uh, we have had 20 more times candidates compared to the number of places. And the hit rate, which usually is 50%, was up to 100%. There is no refusal to any of the proposition we made. Usually we, we, lost, we lose one, one out of two. So that is something which is, I think, called to bloom and to hopefully generate a, a generation of young people which are, by design, uh, more fluid, I think. And maybe regarding the financing, the idea is to have uh, the EIF uh, launching a program which will sponsor 10 to 15, 1 billion plus late stage uh, uh, funds, plus pre-IPO funds, and I think ultimately we may have a bridge between uh, Euro various European uh, stock markets, which will allow international um, investors to invest into the, uh, the scale-ups which are quoted uh, without having to merge the, the stock markets, because that is a very complex uh, thing. Uh, but being able to invest wherever uh, with the same bridge, with the same uh, platform, is also is already a first step. That's not directly in their current recommendations. I think it's the next step. So yes, they can do things. It's a lot of uh, meat in the in the plate. I think it's currently being done. And thank you. And and Vincent and uh, and ETR, do, do you do you see that the, because there is there seems to be also a problem of visibility of, of some of the measures. Uh, we are aware of, uh, of these, but you know, not every investor, not every entrepreneur is aware of them. Do, do you feel like they're concrete enough and um, reachable enough as, as measures uh, when you're an entrepreneur or an investor? Well, I think uh, we can always do better. I think they are good. I mean, there's the, uh, at least the, we understood that we have to make it work. Uh, I mean, the, the European scale is the good scale. You know, if we want to, to compare with the unicorns of the US and China, we, we have to build uh, this, in particular, our German-French uh, uh, couple. Um, I think there are some more concrete things that can be done. Uh, this morning, we were also with some members of France Digital with uh, Minister Franck Christer in charge of French or France attractiveness. And, and the message I wanted to give him is um, uh, the stock option system that we have in France, the BSPCE, is a very powerful one. I think it has helped in you know, the, the ecosystem thriving because you can pay people less than Google or Amazon does, but you give them stock options that will be more you know, in, in the future. The system in Germany is very bad. And so the startup in Germany with the equivalent of France Digital are lobbying uh, against that. But I think we need to think even more ambitious. We need that at a European level. So that, for instance, we have an office in Madrid, we have an office in Munich, we are launching Benelux. So we have a, some kind of, for me that's the, the ideal, but supranational you know, system for stock options, which could be European and accessible to all tech uh, or, or innovative companies. That would be a big difference. Because if we want to compete in terms of talent to the GAFA, well, that's the only option. So we need to have an alignment. We need to have German people coming to Paris and understand what their stock options are worth, what is the fiscality on it, and the contrary. Yeah, from the German perspective, the ESOP is definitely, definitely a big pain point. The other one I would highlight is tax incentives for angels or private investors in funds. I think there you can see immediately also the impact if I compare to France. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, shall we move to investors? Um, it's, yeah, I think Iris is probably the best case study that we could ever think of in terms of being successful both in France and in Germany. What do you think is the, is the basis of this success? Yeah, it, it's true that if we look back, so a few years ago there were a bunch of French VCs that decided to go to Germany, uh, many of them with a small unit, quite targeted approach. The result has been mixed. Some of them have pulled back why? Simply the objectives were not met. Uh, some others have stayed, but with rather limited presence and uh, just a satellite unit doing specific investments. 
And it's, it's not so common to have a fund that has committed really to become Franco-German with equal weight in terms of team, uh, portfolio, etc. Um, I think our approach has been really to get a critical mass uh, in both regions and be equally strong in both regions. Why? It's, it's not only because of deal flow. I think it also creates a lot of benefits on the portfolio side. Right now we have a 50-50 split in our portfolio and, and this network, it's uh, extremely helpful for our portfolio companies and also for our deal flow sourcing activities. Um, but there are not so many examples. If I look in the other direction, there are even fewer examples. Uh, it's more recent. Uh, some early stage venture capital funds in Germany have raised larger funds and have made commitments to invest also in, in France. Uh, some of them have a person on the ground. And yet I get many questions about how are we going to manage to do that. We, we haven't done a single investment. It's very hard for us to know if we are getting the right investments. Uh, or the right opportunities, uh, everything is more difficult, the legal technicalities, uh, the, f the deal dynamics, etc. So I think there are even fewer examples in, in this direction. Um, I think for me the takeaway is to, uh, to think really hard about what is the level of commitment and also to set the right objectives and take maybe a bit of a longer term perspective in order to be successful. And, and in the way you operate, do you on a, say, a German deal, will you have a team uh, of partners, both from the French and the German office, working together? Or, or will it be only locals with locals? So we try to have someone local and then someone who really knows the topic. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's, it's not. But we see ourselves as a really one team in, in all dimensions. Um, so, so yes, we oftentimes collaborate on deals. And you see, you see entrepreneurs well, well accepting the fact of having these you know, binational teams. It's very consistent but, but, with what we sell as well. Yeah. So it's the first proof that we are serious about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Vincent, maybe some, some lessons as an entrepreneur for entrepreneurs in the room? Well, there will be tons and I'm happy to, to meet you maybe after. Um, I mean, so we've been there for, for two years. Uh, I think we made a lot of mistakes uh, and probably the mistakes that you, that you do, but I see that in every launch in, in every country is uh, about HR. Um, so the first thing I will say is, uh, again, go, go, go humble at the beginning in Germany because like, know that you don't know, that you have to understand a lot of things. Uh, if you can, like spend some time there. I mean, I've chosen to live there and be with my family there and come back to Paris from time to time. I know, for instance, uh, uh, Stanislas from Dr. Lieb, he, he made the contrary and was going there two or three days a, a week. And it was super important for them to understand that in, in the end, it's okay, neighbor, but the, 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 the system, the, the medical system is very different. So, so be involved, uh, so be humble, but go big at the same time because you have to show the, the, the people there in Germany, I mean, Germans are proud and they are rightfully so, I think, uh, most of the time, but they are very proud and they don't want to feel again that they work for a satellite office. So show them it's the most important market for you. It's gonna be the key priority of the company, so I think it's very important. And then, so on recruitment, um, I think what Itzia said is very true. I've seen a lot of success with companies who are, uh, managed to find someone who was bicultural and not necessarily French, um, French or German, but finding someone who, I don't know, is Spanish, German, it, it gives a different flavor. Or in our case, for instance, we, knew, we just recruited a new GM. He has been working for eight or nine years at Criteo. So he's very German, but at the same time, he's been used to work with, with French people, which is different. So I think that's a good thing. And maybe a last thing on, on HR again is uh, um, recruit the recruiter first. And, and, and invest a lot on that, like uh, uh, take some time and, and find the best recruiter possible and almost as employee number one, because recruitment is so hard and it's going to be the first spoke person, I could say, to, to the, of your company. So you need to have someone. Again, you are in, uh, for instance, in Munich, you're in competition with uh, all the GAFA, all the tech companies of US who have done an IPO. And when they start in Europe, they say, maybe after London, they say, okay, biggest market is DAR. DAR now is not, not Berlin most of the time for these companies, is, is, is Munich. And, and, and then you're in competition with these people. So you have to have a very, very good recruiter. So that will be my, 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 my recommendation. 
Olivier, some some closing remarks on on you're a, you're a great observatory of yeah. this world. No, actually, uh, I was amused because uh, we we happen to be uh, uh, one of the few uh, real, I would say, uh, uh, historic uh, Franco-German success. Huh? Uh, Roland Berger <laughs> is more or less as strong in in France as it is in Germany. So uh, I was thinking about the laboratory, which we are in a way. Uh, it's true that I find uh, my colleagues very eager to. Uh, to collaborate with us, very eager, uh, very glad uh, to, uh, to work here in France, so very eager to, to be in cross teams. Uh, it's true, I agree with you, uh, Vincent, that uh, uh, we need also to pay a lot of respect uh, to them, in a way. Huh? Uh, so that means that uh, there is no possibility of satellization, really. Uh, it needs to be uh, powerful places, which we develop over there, I think. Uh, that being said, um, I do experience on a daily basis the capacity to uh, successfully interact with them every day and to develop clients all together, uh, hand in hand, uh, which is not a given, but I can testify uh, it, it, it can work. Well, thank you very much to the three of you. It was a pleasure uh, to talk about this topic and, and thank you for everyone to, for listening. We'll be uh, glad to, let, to uh, answer to any questions you may have afterwards around a drink or a coffee. Thank you, everyone.